Hi there everybody, this is Fairy or the Hedge Witch and welcome back to my sacred space. I'm a little bit nervous about filming today. Um, in my last couple videos I mentioned I think once that I got a new microphone um, and this is my first time using the microphone during like an actual video recording and not as just a voiceover so I'm a little nervous about how this little set of videos that I'm gonna film today is going to turn out. Um, I think it'll be fine. I think I have everything set up. If you notice me looking down in this direction, that's where my laptop is where I'm recording my audio. Um, <laughs> and also this is my first time filming during the day. Uh, usually I film at like literally one in the morning and it's currently 3:49 p.m. So um, I'm still kind of figuring out the lighting for this. I think this looks okay. I hope so. Um, sorry about all the technical stuff, but let's get into the topic for today. So I have some friends of mine um, that regularly reach out to me for advice and um, learning, I guess, with witchcraft. They're like baby witches and they ask me questions if they are trying to learn something. And because I'm trying to put a lot of effort into this YouTube channel right now, I also will ask them about like what kinds of topics they would be interested in learning about from me. The people that I talk to, one of them is my partner, one of them used to be my roommate, so um, they're pretty close to me and they know that for a very long time um, I have had a lot of experiences with shadow people or shadow beings <laughs> and both of them actually separately, I don't have them like in a chat together, they both separately said that they would like to know more about um, my personal experiences and kind of some theories that I might have about shadow people or shadow beings. I'm a little bit unsure about making this video, uh, one because I haven't been having issues with these beings lately and I don't really want to invite them back into my space by talking about them, so hopefully that won't happen. <laughs> and also, um, all of the information that I have to share on these beings is purely anecdotal, so none of this is any sort of researched, like, factual information. It's factual to me because it's something that I experienced, but like, um, I didn't do like heavy research into like books and blogs and everything with like paranormal researchers and everything. So this is just uh, about what I personally believe and have experienced with these type of beings. So first things first, if you guys don't know what shadow people are, I guess that would be a good place to start and then we can go from there and kind of talk about um, my personal history and then some theories about what I think they are and why they follow me around all the fucking time. <laughs> so shadow people or shadow beings, I tend to call them shadow beings because when I see them they're not like person shaped. Typically um, they are black entities of some sort and you can usually see them uh, kind of in your peripheral vision or on the edges of your vision or they move very quickly so if you see them in front of you they're probably not going to hang out for very long um, and that can kind of lead to people like not knowing that they're seeing a spirit or um, doubting themselves and like literally gaslighting themselves being like yeah I'm crazy I didn't actually see that and I have to say um, when I first started seeing them it did take me a while to understand what was going on. It's hard because uh, sometimes they do just look like shadows and you can try to talk yourself out of it and be like oh well that was probably just like, I don't, when you're scared, like it's really easy to make things up and be like, oh, that was obviously just this, or uh, I was just imagining it. But um, I've been seeing these things for so many years and multiple people around me as well have also seen the same things as me. So um, that was a lot of validation too. It's not really widely agreed on what these spirits or entities or beings actually are. We'll get into my personal theories on that at the end of the video after I talk about some anecdotes, but um, as like a definition, they're not like, people don't really agree. A lot of people do see um, like a large person shaped thing. Uh, personally, I almost never see shadow beings that are shaped like people. Um, they can come in any sizes. I've seen ones that are like this big and I've seen ones that are like eight feet tall. Um, <laughs> 
I have also seen them both inside and outside of my house. Personally, they usually come to me inside my house, but occasionally I will see them outside and it's like extra scary for some reason. <laughs> I think it's also pretty widely agreed that these entities or beings can't really touch you or like do anything to you. They don't really manipulate the physical world as like a poltergeist or like other types of spirits might. Some people might disagree with that uh, based on like their own personal experience, but most of the information I've ever read has said something along those lines. And from my experience, I tend to agree that they don't touch stuff. <laughs> so for me, the first time I remember starting to see these shadow creatures was when I was in high school. For reference, I just turned 23, so that was uh, almost 10 years ago that I started seeing them regularly. I was about 15 years old and um, I was going through a really traumatic breakup. For a while in my life, um, I was dating somebody who was very emotionally abusive and very manipulative and um, just an absolute monster. <laughs> And I started to see these like shadow blurs, like just kind of going past in the corner of my vision um, around like while we were breaking up and after the breakup. I was not doing well with this breakup. I was super depressed. I was like dissociating like crazy. That's also when my dissociation problems started. But that's the first time I really remember seeing them often. And at that time it was mostly like little like not necessarily circular but like this size roughly things and they would kind of go past my vision sometimes if it was really bad they would go in front of my vision i did not like that at all but it started off with just a couple and then eventually it did like over the next few months after that it did work up into being quite a lot like all the time this is also roughly almost when i started getting into witchcraft it took another year or two after this but um i just got so overwhelmed and i didn't know what to do because like i didn't have any sort of tools or anything to deal with spirits i just started crying like in my bed because i i didn't know what to do and i was so scared because like they weren't hurting me but it was scary because i thought like i don't know i was like losing my shit or I don't know. It was just wild and I didn't know why it was happening. So after that, um, I did start doing witchcraft and I did some research and I kind of figured out what was going on. Um, it was a little bit less scary after that and as I've kind of had to deal with this for so long, um, I don't really like jump or get startled by them anymore. Um, it's more of like a an, an inner like visceral fear of like, you know. <laughs> Sometimes I'll see one and I'll look at my partner and I'll go like, oh yeah, there was like just a shadow thing over there. That's cool. And he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I don't know, man, <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> so I have had, I believe four separate people while they're hanging out with me also see these beings, um, which that was very validating, but also a little bit scary to me. Because on one hand, I was like, okay, so these are definitely what I'm seeing and it's a, a real thing that's happening because other people are also seeing them. But on the other hand, like now it's getting so bad that other people are seeing them. So like, what do I do? The first time it happened uh, was in my old house. I was about 20 or 21 years old. So this was just a couple years ago. Uh, my roommate Maddie was talking to me and she's, kind of interested in the occult. She's not a witch, but she does tarot a lot and occasionally will do like a, a manifesting spell or something like that, but only very occasionally. She doesn't really identify as a witch, but I like had mentioned uh, casually in our like roommate group chat that like, yeah, I don't know, the house kind of spooks me out at night, whatever. Like I don't like being here by myself, but I hadn't really mentioned anything on like, oh yeah, I see these shadow blobs like all around all the time. <laughs> so there was one day uh, she was talking to me and she was mentioning how she kept seeing, she kept thinking that like a cat was walking into her room because it was about like a cat sized blob um, floor level and she kept looking over to see like what why is there we didn't have cats back then so she was like why is there a cat walking in my room and there was nothing then so that really freaked me out because uh, she described it as like a cat-sized shadow blob 
thing, um, which is pretty much what I see all the time. There was an occasion where my partner saw one in the living room of that house. We were just hanging out and he was like, holy shit. Um, that one I did also see, that was not my favorite. <laughs> and he didn't believe in ghosts really before he started seeing me. Um, in that same house also, we had a friend over one night and she kept telling us that she was seeing something on the porch, like through our sliding glass doors to the back of the house. She was like, there's like a cat or like a possum on your porch. There is nothing on our porch. And then in this current house, my other roommate Lexi, uh, there was one night that they were heading upstairs to go to bed and we have three cats in this house. One of them is a tortoise shell, um, so she's pretty dark in color. And Lexi was like, I don't, usually the cats follow them upstairs, so they were trying to gather all the cats. And they saw a cat in the sewing room and they started like calling the cat. And then it turned out that our tortoise shell cat was actually already upstairs. Um, like they, Lexi turned around and Vin was behind them, so. Uh, the other cats were also accounted for, um, and Lexi did know about the shadow stuff at this time, so they were like, hey, can you please do a house cleanse? I just saw that the shadow cat. That's what we call it, the shadow cat. <laughs> and pretty much after that, um, I haven't had too many issues, like, in my, in my current house in the past couple months with shadow people, sightings. <laughs> I'm very thankful for that because even though it's, it doesn't feel very dangerous to me, it is, like, very deeply scary to see something like that that you can't explain and honestly it gets scarier when other people can see it too so based on my many years of experience with like randomly seeing all these different entities i have some theories on what i think they are and like what they do <laughs> and again this is not based on research or any sort of like article or blog or study this is only my personal opinion it's totally fine if you disagree with me so personally i don't think that shadow people and shadow beings are actually like it's hard to explain because i think that they are some sort of spirit but i don't think that they're like a person there I definitely don't think that they're like ghosts they're not dead people I can almost with a hundred percent certainty say that I'm a little bit torn between if they're some sort of other entity like a demon or a fey creature or if they are purely just manifestations of negative energy that have now taken some sort of spiritual form I lean a little bit more towards the the negative energy manifestation thing um, just based on like the times in my life when I have seen them more. These creatures when I'm having a really shitty go of things. When I first started seeing them I was going through that breakup, um, a couple other breakups and friend breakups and things like that I would see them often. Uh, Any time that I'm really struggling with my depression or um, like a, a manic episode I tend to see them more as well. Or if there's a time when like my roommates and I get into some sort of fight or disagreement over something, which doesn't happen often, but when you live with people, sometimes it happens. Um, I also tend to see them come around then. So to me, it would sort of make sense if they were some sort of like spiritual manifestation of this negative energy, because to me, it seems like they come to like the source of whatever shitty thing is happening and they're able to like draw and feed off of that energy. Depending on the severity of my emotions, uh, I tend to see more of these beings if stuff is like really, really bad. Now I do also see them when like stuff is okay. Uh, right now I'm doing pretty well and like a week or two ago I saw a really huge one like just chilling outside. <laughs> That's kind of what I think they are and like I said it doesn't seem to me like they're really able to do anything to you. I'm a little bit torn on whether or not I think that they can manipulate like dreams or anything like that. Personally I don't tend to have like nightmares or things like that very often. Um, a lot of the times that I do have nightmares, I do tend to see shadow beings a lot more, but that could also be more of a like, I'm going through something that's making me upset and therefore I'm having nightmares, instead of it being like, well, these shadow beings are here and they're making me have nightmares, if that makes sense. I wish I had more information to like solidly share with people, um, but that's kind of most of my theories. 
As for how I deal with getting rid of them, usually, honestly, a proper house cleansing does the trick for me. Now, in order for it to be very effective, um, I also find it necessary to cleanse myself because, like I said, I feel like a lot of it comes from negative emotions and just like shitty stuff. So if you also do a self cleanse and also a house cleanse, that's usually when I have the best results. Typically I cleanse my house with smoke with an herb bundle. I change the herbs up seasonally um, <laughs> because I'm very strange like that. Lately I've been using green sage. Uh, over winter, like around Yule, I was using cedar and pine. You could also use incense. Um, if you're really in a pinch, you can use candle smoke. Um, you can also cleanse your house in other ways that are not with smoke, like with water or salt water you can do like a blessing where you do like um, some sort of um, affirmation <laughs> and uh, maybe like a visualization technique where you're imagining um, like a dome of energy protecting your house from like bad shit. And after I do cleanses, I typically will line my doorways and most of my windows with salt. I really only line like my bedroom windows with salt just because um, we have cats that like to sit in the windows um, and I want to try to put the smallest amount of salt outside as I can. I live in Wisconsin, there's already a ton of salt that gets put on the roads um, during the winter with like the snow and everything and I know it's not good for like the groundwater and the ecosystem and stuff so as much as I can I try to not add to that but I do find it incredibly very, very, very helpful to line doorways and windowways with salt so that once you cleanse, the bad stuff that you just cleansed out won't just seep back in. And then for self-cleansing, um, I'm actually, after this, about to film a video about my favorite bath ritual. It's a little bit involved, um, so if you don't want to do something as involved as my bath ritual, which I can link in the iCard once that video is up, uh, hopefully next week. I also recommend doing smoke cleansings for yourself. I like to do that with incense where I kind of just pass it around my body until I feel like it's good. Or uh, I'll just take a regular bath without like all the, the ritual and skincare stuff with it. And that also is helpful, especially if you put um, like sea salt or Epsom salt in the bath, that's really helpful as well. My camera says 22 minutes. Uh, I'm not really sure how I talked so long on this subject because I was like, I don't have anything to talk about with shadow people, but I guess I do. <laughs> but yeah, that's about all I have for you guys. I hope that you found this interesting, um, possibly helpful if you guys are also um, seeing spooky shit like I do. And as always, if there's anything in particular you'd like to see from me, please let me know down below. Um, I have been polling around my friends to see what they want to see, so I have a lot of ideas um, and I'm really, really excited to keep filming for this channel, but um, I want to make sure that the content that I'm making is stuff that people want to see. That's the goal of this channel, is to fill in gaps of information where other people um, on YouTube are not talking about these subjects, so I want to make sure that things are getting covered. I'm filming this on April 15th, uh, but I think it's going to be uploaded in like May, so uh, I hope that you had a lovely Beltane if it's already passed by the time I'm uploading it. this. I love Beltane, it's one of my favorite holidays, so I hope you guys enjoyed your Beltane. And that's all I have for you guys today, so um, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!